On the, on the east coast is dominated by the oldest, uh, the uh, youngest volcano, most active volcano in Europe, Mount Etna. So, and the sweeping pan panorama of Etna is unbelievable. Yet, if you go on the other coast, the west coast, San Capo, uh, San Vito La Capo, Trapani, and so forth, completely different textures. So, depending on where you go in Sicily, it's uh, it's basically like the guy, a Forrest Gump. You know, you know, life is a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Sicily is the exact same thing. Depending on where you go, it's a completely different and unique experience. North, south, east, to west, you'll be in for a treat if you go to see Sicily. Tell us a little about the Sicilian people. Uh, the people today are survivors. The Sicilians have been oppressed. If you ever look at their war record, their, I think their record is probably zero and 500. They've been conquered and oppressed their entire existence. It's basically in their gene code to survive. Like the Chris, the, right now, the economic crisis, even though it's devastating Sicily, the Sicilians are coping with it a lot better than other European people because they're used to doing without. Uh, a family of four, you know, the mother will get the rice and the pasta and pick the olives and pick the lemons and make a meal and basically that's that's how they do it. Sicilians are survivors. This is what the, the immigrants who came to America and felt and over there today you see it, I see it with my own eyes. As a foreigner, not a, if you weren't a Sicilian or a Sicilian American and you were traveling to Sicily, what could you expect in terms of in terms of the attitude of the people towards you? And, Sicilians love Americans. Why? Because <coughs> Patton and Montgomery liberated the Sicilian population during the Second World War uh, from the boot of the Nazi uh, domination. And if you travel in south of uh, south in uh, south of Setacusa on the way down to Pacino, you will still see the remnants of the Second World War, the German pillboxes and so forth. Uh, the German and in uh, San Giovanni La Punta. Uh, at the Hotel Paradiso del Etna actually is, was Rommel's military headquarters and you could go there and stay there. So Sicily, is, Sicily has got, the history is just unbelievable. Whether it's the Roman or Greek Romans that are still there, whether it's the Spanish, if you go to Etna, I mean uh, Enna in the middle of the country, that's Spanish. No matter where you go, it's a different, and Messina is different as you know. So basically it's, it's a wonderful country. So since you first arrived, uh, what, what are some of your most powerful physical images, places, images of Sicily that stay the with you? The smell of the soil. I picked up the soil and I smelled it for the first time. And what I was thinking about when I did that was this was the same soil that my great-grandfather and my grandfathers tilled and farmed uh, when they were young kids. And the feeling overwhelmed me. And, I, and to this day, I remember I planted a lemon tree, a fig tree, a uh, mandarin tree, and an olive tree in front of my yard. It was a very hot day in August. It was probably the most emotional day of my life. Recreate what I did, recreate with my, with my, uh, my grandparents and my great-grandparents. It's very difficult to put in words, emotions. I try, but, you know, I'm not Hemingway, that's what I'll tell you. I'm just a regular guy from Lawrence, Massachusetts. <laughs> trying to get the word. Anyways, please allow me to introduce myself first and then I'll get speaking for the evening. Uh, for those of you who have not been here before, this is the Italian American Museum and my name is Dr. Joseph Schell, so I'm the founder and president of the museum. Some of you, some of you remember the New York Historical Society exhibit that took place in 1999. Well, I was the impresario to put that together. As a result of that exhibition, people said to me, "You have to have a museum." So, in 2001, the University of the State of New York granted me a charter as the first Italian American museum in the United States of America. So, this is the first one. Uh, officially designated as an Italian American museum. Now, you can see we're not too large at this point, but there are a lot of very interesting things in here, from the Sicilian style puppets that you saw as you walked in, uh, to the organ grinder in the back, and everything, and everything in between. We are expanding. Within the next two months, we'll be three times the size of what we are right now. We're going in this way, and downstairs as well. So, 
when you come back, I hope you won't be as tight. <laughs> In any case, it's a pleasure to have you all, and we really do appreciate our guest speakers when they come. We have somebody very interesting to speak this evening, to see. And uh, he's, he's very infectious when you start to speak to him, he really engages you. Uh, he's got a very charming way about himself. So without, and I'm sure the ladies know that even more than I do. So the uh, boss, the boss, the boss. So without for, was, for an attorney, that's pretty good. Thank you very much. Before I get started this evening, and I'm going to speak really quick, he's already given me 45 minutes. Usually 45 minutes, I just get my name out, but we'll try to hurry it up. I got Tano Cipolla, Vincent Tatone, and way in the back over there, uh, Steve Carboni, are three of the directors on the Sicilian project that we started last year that I'm going to be speaking about. So, Gaetano, from the bottom of my heart, grazie a tante, mille, grazie mille, no, me tu due mille. you, grazie a cinquanta, cinquanta, and then for you way over there, Stephen, I'll tell you about Stephen in just a little bit. Has anybody heard me speak before? No, no. All right, so some people, I'm, I'm, being, I'm going to give you a two minute who I am, okay? Uh, I'm an attorney. <clears throat> The first thing I am is a grandfather and a father. No matter what I do, okay? Uh, everything else that I do in my life is extra. I'm on the law faculty of two very prominent law schools in Boston, Massachusetts, Northeastern University School of Law, and also Suffolk University School of Law. My quote-unquote expertise is to train the graduates of the law school to take the bar examination. And as a kid from the city of Lawrence, Massachusetts, I've trained over 8,000 attorneys in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts who are practicing law. So that's what I do, okay? I've written several law books of a scholarly nature. Uh, now, I've started the last several years to, to do blogging and to write articles for my newsletter for all things to sing in. And I now have written my third book, which just came out a few weeks ago. Which, oh my goodness, it's I happen to have some copies here. Can you believe that? Okay. The, my third book is called Figu Bedu. And I'm hoping afterwards maybe you will think about it. So that's what I do professionally <clears throat> for four months a year. The other eight months a year, I live in Sicily. Okay, I'm, a, I'm Sicilian, as you can think about, as you know. Uh, I live in Aci Trezza, Aci Catano, although. Sono Tre Castagnesi, I'm from Tre Castagni, which is on the side of Mount Etna, which as I'm speaking to you right now is blowing up, yeah. and I'm wondering if my house is still there, Joseph, I don't know. But this is having an eruption yesterday, and it's actually on the Catania side. Yes. The Catania side, and you should see the blowholes, they're enormous. My friends from uh, Sicily have been selling them, selling them uh, to me. So I write, and God gave me two gifts, okay, besides my children. First, he gave me a gift of being able to paint pictures with words. Okay, he gave me the gift of being able to write in a very relaxed and informal way, not a scholarly way. My books on Sicily are funny, yet they teach, and they're emotional, yet they're not, you know, formal. So, and he also gave me the gift of being able to to talk. So I talk, and I write which is, as Abraham Lincoln says, is what the primary task <clears throat> of what a lawyer does. Okay? I have a law office in Catania. I do international law <clears throat> with my partner Massimo Grimaldi. I've been doing that now for 15 years. And let me just spend two minutes and tell you how I got involved with Sicily uh, to start. Okay? Back in <clears throat> 1995, I was, I was a different type of a person than I am today. I, I, I really was. I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed about the type of attorney that I was in the 80s and 90s. I was a very high-profile Boston lawyer involved uh, in um, all sorts of very important uh, cases all over the newspapers and the television. And I was, frankly, full of myself. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm okay. I'm, I'm, in retrospect, now, now that I'm now that I'm I'm older, I'm embarrassed at my activities. Had I had I known today, had I had even a modicum of emotional uh, intelligence, I, I completely lacked emotional intelligence. I mean, after all, I 
I was a lawyer, so, so I had none. But anyways, back in 1996, my father, Santo Zappola, was dying. <clears throat> and uh, the last couple of weeks, end of life, oldest son, I was with my father, sitting by his bed, holding his hand. Uh, I remember my father grabbing me. He literally grabbed me by my, my shirt. He said, Alfred, you have to do me a favor. I said, Dad, whatever you want, you know. He says, you need to go to Sicily. I said, Sicily, for what? Why do I have to go to Sicily? My whole life, my life consisted of Boston, Rome, or Rome, Boston. Sometimes it was Boston, Rome, Rome, Boston. Florence, maybe, Amsterdam. But Sicily, it was, I, the connection with me, I had in made yet, okay? My father grabbed me by my shirt. He says, you have to go. I said, why do I have to go? What do I have to go to Sicily for? Why? Okay. He says, because when your grandfather, my grandfather, Alfred uh, Zappa, was dying, I promised him that I would say a prayer at the Geza de Sandafio, the Church of St. Alfio, I never did it. So now you have to go for your grandfather and for me. So what am I going to say, no? My father's dying, all right? So God rest his soul, he died. And to this day, by the way, I want you to know I miss him. And my mom, okay, God rest her soul. But he died, we buried him. Four days later, I got on the plane, Boston, Rome, Alitalia, which I found out is short for always late and take off and land. <laughs> 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 See you right? It's unbelievable, right? You go down over there, they say, What do you want to eat? Do you want meat or fish? So I say, Meat. So they bring me chicken. So I say, wait a minute, this is chicken, it's not meat. And they say, wait a minute, chicken is meat. So I can't, you can't argue, you can't argue. So in any case, Boston and Rome, I flew Rome to Fontana Rosa Airport in Catania. And let me tell you something, okay? When my feet hit the tarmac in 1996, for the first time, Every DNA molecule in my body said to me, I feel you're home, mm -hmm. okay? I don't know what happened, but there was a complete paradigm shift that took place for me that day, okay? I walked, I called my uh, secretary up, and I canceled my appointments. I had a big trial schedule, I said, push it off. And I walked the streets of Tecastani <clears throat> for, uh, I think it was 10 days, okay? reconnecting with my ancestors. I felt their spirits, okay? It was like, kind of like a catharsis that came over me. And I, start, I decided, okay, I want to go back to America. The first thing I did was I became an Italian citizen. Okay, my grandfather, blah, 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 I'm a lawyer, blah, 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 done. Okay, in less than a year, I had all the paperwork done. Then I says, okay, <clears throat> Sicily. I started a company called All Things Sicilian, all right? Import company, internet company. Within three years, we made history. All Things Sicilian with a product from Bronte. Si chiamo uh, Pistachio Nut Cream di Bronte. Guess what we did? We won the gold medal at the fancy food show in New York City. First time a Sicilian company had ever done that. Wow. Bam! Okay. The Italian Trade Commission one day uh, called me up, Avocado Zappola, yeah, uh, we just want you to know that we've given you the Distinguished Service Award. The Italian government gave me the Distinguished Service Award. Yeah, this is good, okay. So now, I'm going back, going back, going back, going back, going back, going back. It's like I was going back there all the time. I bought my first house in Pacino. Why? I don't know why. I've been asking myself before. <laughs> Bacchino was over here. It's about a nine iron away from Libya. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> all right? I'm from Trecastani, which is over here by Mount Etna. But it was a house. It was 60,000 euro. I paid cash money for it. I bought it. Two years later, that was it. I sold it. I made a few more bucks. And then I got back into my neck of the woods. And then I started to understand the people. Okay? When you live there, you understand the Sicilian people. Not when you visit there for a week or you visit there for two weeks. When you live with them and you shop and you go buy your shoes and you go to the dry cleaner and you see this and that. I'm here to tell you people tonight, okay, 
because we're all the same. Sangu dimi sangu, okay? We're all the same. At the beginning of the 20th century, your descendants and my descendants came to America to seek a better life. And guess what? America has given it to us. Sicilian Americans represent the largest group of Italian Americans. There are 12 million of us. There are 30 million Italian Americans. There are 12 million Sicilian Americans. And New York City has the largest concentration of Sicilian Americans. I'm telling you right now, and what I am now, I'm like the Sicilian John the Baptist now. <laughs> Sicily needs you. Okay? Because now, as opposed to the beginning of the 20th century, when the unskilled labor came, because of the influenza outbreak, or this or that, and they came to America seeking the roads of glory and gold, today, there is a critical drain, intellectual drainage going on of the kids. Okay? By kids, I mean from 16 to 24, that have a 54% Unemployment rate. Okay. Fifty-four on why? Because they can't speak. One of the reasons they can't speak English. Why can't they speak English? Because the education system in certain parts of Sicily, it really isn't what you know. It's who you know. Everything in Sicily, it's old time. Okay, old things are hard to change. And if you know somebody who knows somebody who opens up a door, guess what? You have a job, you've got to start tomorrow to jot it, okay? You've got to teach English to the 12th graders. You're a page ahead of the kids, okay? The kids, you can't speak English. The kids can't speak English. And our kids are now competing against the bilingual com countries of Germany, Holland, Belgium, Ireland, England, and we have a 50 for, and our kids are leaving Sicily, and they're working in the mainland, and they're going from the mainland to Germany, to France, to Spain. Sicily is becoming a country of old people and young people. The vital middle class, the intelligentsia that is so important for a country to survive is dissipating. And you and me we now have a moral obligation, not an obligation, we have a moral obligation because of who we are, because of what Sicily has done for us and our progeny. My son Matthew is a lawyer. My daughter Jennifer is a special education teacher. My daughter Katie that you met last year is a musical artist. My kids are where they are today. I'm where I am today because of my grandfather Gaetano Torisi and my other grandfather, Afiu Zappala, both guys who couldn't speak a word of English. My grandfather, Gaetano, came in the year 1908, 12 U.S. dollars in his pocket. And I'm sure you have the same story. So, I started to talk about it. And I started to write about it. First, I had to learn about it. And there's a lot of stuff out there that so-called authors write about <coughs> that you know, history is written by the victims, okay? And there's a lot of stuff out there, in my view, that really isn't accurate, okay? So I just decided, you want to know something? I'm just a normal guy. I'm a kid from the city of Lawrence, Massachusetts. I'm just going to write what I see, okay? Because the people back in America, I can relate to them. And if I see this and I write it, they're going to understand what I'm talking about, okay? So, last year, when I came out with this book, Gaetano Strunk, there was a chapter in there <clears throat> that I said, if I was a millionaire, which by the way, I'm not, but if I was a millionaire, what I would do with my money is I would train Sicilian kids how to speak English so they can compete in the U European Union, and the example I have to give you is a very real example, okay? At the fancy food show in New York City at the Jacob Javits Center, okay, when I would, I would set up a big, beautiful display for my products, 
okay, from uh, Manfredi Barbera for, for the oil from Tropani, from uh, uh, Piori Pasta from Mazzaro di Vallo, uh, um, Fattore Sissisole from Paterno, I have all my companies there, and I'm hustling my products, okay? <coughs> Meanwhile, on the next aisle is the Italian delegation, who the vendors there, the money comes from the region, so they're not paying for it, nobody will know. No what doing. Nobody can speak English except for a couple of kids that they bring along to translate. So as a result, when a when a person comes in like from, you know, like a big department store and they want to know about their product, you know, how many come on a skid? What's the price? What's the shelf life? What's this one? We we have we have stupid people. And as a result, the Italians go home with no except for those Italians who can speak English. The rest of them get a free vacation in America for one week. All expenses paid. They stay at the Roosevelt Hotel. Ciao, I think I'm going to come next year. But they don't sell anything. Okay? I saw this. So I wrote about it. Steve, can you just put your hand up for one second? Can you stand up, please? Okay. He's my brother now. Okay? I love this guy. We got very, very close. He purchased this book. He called me up. <clears throat> he says, you know, I read your book. He says, my people are from Gaji, right outside of Darmina. He says, you know, that chapter that you wrote about the Sicilian project kind of got to me. Mm, I want to make a donation. It'll help you out. I'm like, oh, geez, that's great, you know? Some money. Maybe I can pay someone 50 bucks or 100 bucks to teach a few kids. He sent me an email the next day. He said, I put a check in the mail. He says, if you need more money, ask. Okay? If you need more money, ask. First check, $10,000. Okay? End of the first year, last year, we've educated now 100 students. This year, we're going to educate 200 students. Not only in Tharmina, Gaji order. Now we're going to And two weeks ago, we started a program, which I'm very proud of, by the way, in the worst section in Catania for homeless kids at a hostel. Twelve kids, okay? Step by step. We're going to take it. I need, I need you people to be, I need you people to be, you need to get the word out. Okay? Because a five dollars to it costs just so you understand, okay? You don't teach a kid how to speak English in five minutes. You know, you, you know, if you took you know French and Spanish in high school, you know you have you know French one, French two, etc. Okay. We have a great school in Tarmina. See came a Bob Babylonia a language school, Alessandra Adorno. We have native English speakers, all with advanced degrees in English, okay? And the first thing we do, well, we get the students. We, meet, we have the, they, the faculty meets with the parents, and they say, the Americans are gonna pay for the school over here. Sign this contract. You have to come to every class, or else see you later, okay? They put the advertisement in, 100 kids, 100 parents wanna, we, we're only doing 10 or 12, okay? We can't have 100 kids, you can't. Okay, they lined up, okay? So we give them a pretest to see where they're at. Then we give them a post test, you know, standard academic stuff. And after they get done basic level one, we move them up to beginners, advanced beginners, beginners three, beginners four, intermediate, advanced intermediate. You understand how it goes? And then finally, after a year and a half, two years, we're going to have kids that can speak English at the high school level, okay? And that's what we're doing now. So the Tamina Pro, thanks to Steve, okay? Another guy, a guy by the name of uh, Giovanni Lanza from Montreal, he sent me an email. He's one of our directors. I was born in Montreal. I came over here, I was 14 years old, I was in the service, I understand what you're doing. I'm going to send you $5,000, okay? Yesterday, before I came here, a woman, Maria Gloria from San Francisco, California, called me up. Uh, Villa Franca. I says, no, you mean Franco Villa. She says, no, 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 Villa Franca. I says, well, where is it? It's Vicino, uh, Provincia Messina, the same. 
I said, yeah. She said, my father and mother, my, both sets of my parents were, how much is it going to cost us, my family, to start a program over there? I said, well, you know, a thousand bucks will get you one class. A thousand dollars, cost a thousand dollars to educate ten kids for one level. <clears throat> That's what it costs, okay? It costs 750 euro, okay? With the exchange rate, that's about $1,050, give or take, roughly, okay? Check comes in, okay? Now, her grandson, her godson calls me up. I heard my godmother donated money. How much does he need to get the program free? I was just talking to Steve today at lunch. It costs, it's going to cost us five grand, $5,000, to get a program going in Villafranca. Tony Kamaster from Saugus, Massachusetts, and his family are going to subsidize another program. So now we're going to have programs after 13 months in Tarmina, Catania, Gaggi, Palermo, Topo Villafranca. Okay? We just started. Okay? Step by step. Listen, not that I want to be ethnically discriminatory in any way. Okay? But I need to point out to you that in Israel is supported primarily by the New York Jews. Period. End of sentence. Everybody in the United States of America knows that. Okay? My question is this. Why don't Sicilian Americans support Sicily even at a 10% rate that the Jews support Israel? I want to know that. Why? I want to know that. I don't have an answer to that. And I've been giving addresses, and uh, I addressed the Sicilian American Cultural Association in Sh Chicago. This is the second time I've been here. In Boston, I've been all over the place. Because now people are saying, hey, that guy's up. He was uh, amused for 15 or 20 minutes. But the message is the same, okay? This is our blood, our country, and it's drying up and it's dying on us. Do you guys understand that? Okay? La crisis is strangling our country. Okay? It's urgent. Now, somebody loses their job. Father. Okay? Four kids. You think they have the support system there as we do here? Here, you know, thanks to Obama, you know, for those of you, you could, you could stay out of work practically, I don't know how long, a wicked long time, as my kids would say. A couple of years, right? You get free medical, you get free this, you get housing assistance. So 350 euro, 12 payments, one year, basta, child. Okay? 350 euros, less, almost 500 bucks. Okay? How can a father with children who's paying 400 or 450 euro a month for rent, plus of course expenses, food, clothing, and everything. How can they possibly afford to feed a family? Tell me. Because in the background, who's in the background now? You want to make some extra money? The mafia mm -hmm. is growing. The right is growing. Mm -hmm. Now I'm starting to see fascist symbols on the graffiti. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't like what I'm seeing. Okay? The left. There's nobody in the middle. Because in desperation, when people are desperate, they do desperate things. So, I wrote another chapter in the book. <laughs> in my second book. And next year when I write my third book, there's going to be another chapter. And if there's a fifth book, there's going to be another chapter. And if I have to get on top of Mount Etna between the options to talk about it, I'm going to. Okay? The answer lies in New York City. The answer lies in Chicago. The answer doesn't lie in Minneapolis, Minnesota, with his six Italians. Okay? <laughs> Here, okay, so I need money. Well, I don't need money. The Sicilian project needs money. And it's not that I'm asking and I have to hustle a hundred thousand bucks because Steve and I were talking about it. You know, I don't get paid for this. I'm a lawyer, I'm a writer, okay? I don't get paid for this. I do it because I love Guy Thomas doesn't get paid, Vincent doesn't get paid, Stephen is paying for everything. 
But it would be nice if I can find a few more angels. And our budget, if we can get up right now for this year, if we do 15, 20,000 bucks, about 200 kids are educated. We have in the bank and committed by pledges, you have, of course, you know, you've got the winter quarter, the spring quarter, the summer quarter, the fall quarter. We have enough now to pay for the first three quarters. Okay? We're paid up now until the last quarter. I need to pick up 5000 or 10000 more dollars to finish off this academic year. And then next year, it's another year. We have more students to, to do. This is the first time. And no government, there's no cure, there's no attack. The Italians are out of it. The Sicilian government is out of it because if they were in it, it would get screwed up. This is a do and we don't hire anybody. This is a direct, what they call an academic grant. We have retained the finest school in Sicily with the most qualified teachers and we are furnishing to them grants. And they, in turn, are using their teachers in the areas that we direct them to. I would love to get programs in, for example, Siracusa. Okay? I would love to get a program, for example, on the West Coast. Okay? Even though I'm from the East Coast, I'll throw them a few peanuts in there. Just a joke. No, but you know what I'm saying. You know, I mean, but if we could have somebody that sends me an email or calls the outfit, you know, my grandparents were from Sheffalo. By the way, Sheffalo is beautiful. I take your breath away. Okay? Has anybody been to Sheffalo? Yeah, put that on your place of places to go. That cathedral there is just... Actually, can I say something to you about Sicily? There are so many, there are so many places in Sicily that are simply unforgettable. That will burn images in your heart that you will take to your grave. And I'll, I'll tell you one last story, okay? And then I'll take a question, because you're only letting me speak for a little while, even though I can speak fast. Like, my, my mom, Antonia, God rest her soul, she died a couple years ago. When she was 80, she wanted to go to Sicily. She had never gone. I said, 80 years old, I'm going to take her. My present to my mom, and I took my daughter Jennifer, was my oldest. I said, Jen, you want to come to Sicily? Your job is to take care of Nana. So me, Jen, right? And I knew, because I had just done my citizenship paperwork, where her mother had come from, like the Steinie. I knew exactly where the house was. The reason I knew the house was because my friend Sada Messina had tracked the house down for me. And when I was there, I knocked on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Guy opened the door. I said, Mr. Michael Avocado Zappala, the guy was a retired judge named Messina. He says, what's the story? I said, listen, my grandmother, this was my grandmother's house. I'm bringing my mother here a couple weeks. I want her to come in. He goes, are you, was your mother the Ganji woman? I says, yeah. He says to me, we preserved everything. I said, what do you mean you preserved everything? He says, come. He gave me a tour. And everything that was in that, that house was antique. The guy had lovingly restored it, okay? The look on my mother's face when I brought her to that house, okay? And you know my mom was clutching in the hand when she died? The pictures of that house. That's what Sicily is. That's what we are, okay? That's what we are. I need help. Steve needs help. Vincent needs help. Gaetano has spent an entire career doing this. Can you imagine that? He is my idol. I don't have any idols. But this guy is, okay? He has been a clarion talking about Sicily. And Joseph now with this museum, okay? We need to teach our children. We cannot forget our cultural background, whether it's Sicilian, Italian, this is who we are. This is where our blood comes from, people, okay? In a few years, you know, our generation is going to be dying off. I want my kids, and my kids, by the way, have been with me many times, the Sicily. I want my kids to have the memories of Sicily like I have the memories of Sicily. So that's why I came here today. I came here today to talk to you about it. You can buy my book. You can buy them all, as a matter of fact. 
Because what do I do with the money in any case? I use it to travel here and here to talk about what? The Sicilian project. So that's what I wanted to come here. And I, Joseph, thank you very much for having me here. It's a deadly serious thing that's happening right now in Sicily, folks. Okay, deadly serious. So now I'll take, is it time to do some questions? Anybody have any specific questions?